They tried. They tried to silence me. Tried to kill me. Who? Whoever engineered Rhino's escape and sent him careening through my studio right in the middle of recording my charity Christmas special. Think of the children. And think of me. Because J. Jonah Jameson refuses to be silenced. So in my tireless mission to bring you just the facts, I'm holding my nose and broadcasting from my producer Jared's disgusting hovel of a studio apartment that he shares with... How many others? Five? Good Lord, Jared, when I was your age, I owned a two-bedroom on the Upper West Side. Your generation. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> anyway, if you are wondering who arranged Rhino's escape and pointed him right at your favorite truth speaker, witnesses on the ground are saying both Spider-Men showed up at the exact moment Rhino broke free. Coincidence? I think not. Ho, ho, ho! We've got our first caller coming down the chimney. You're live and festive on Just the Facts with J. Jonah Jameson. Season's greetings, Jonah. I just want to get your thoughts on Roxanne's new development in Harlem. Great for jobs or just wiping out small businesses? So glad you asked, caller. Without question, Roxanne Plaza is American ingenuity at its finest. Green energy for the tree huggers. Groundbreaking new tech for Wall Street and jobs for the locals. Look, we faced a terrible tragedy with last year's Devil's Breath crisis. It's taken time to rebuild, but Roxxon stepped up to the plate, invested millions creating a state-of-the-art facility in a neighborhood that, uh, let's face it, wasn't exactly booming. The way I see it, Roxxon Plaza's a Christmas gift for the people of Harlem and all of New York. I understand some folks fear change, but it's a good thing. Take it from J. Jonah Jameson. Jared, not three sugars, not one sugar. Tahu sugars for 40 years. It's been Tahu sugars. Never do this to me again. Now, I know many of you brush heads love to listen to this show on your subway commute. I personally do my best to avoid setting foot in those feces-infested death tubes. But Jared informs me that a major outage recently stopped all trains going through Harlem. I'm happy to report that service to the area has since been fully restored, but it should come as no surprise to learn that the new Spider-Man was seen futzing with transit authority equipment during the outage. Now I can already hear the zealots among you whining through your phones, but Jonah, obviously Spider-Man fixed the problem. Blah, 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 blah. Let's just stop right there and unpack that. Why would a guy who can swing through the skies and ignore Manhattan gridlock entirely need to even think about what's going on with the subway? If you just follow the threads, they take you right to the inevitable destination, the corner of Spider-Man Street, and Menace Avenue! Merry Christmas! Despite Spider-Man and his sidekick's best attempt to ruin the holidays, I'm here to unwrap the best present you'll get all day. Me, J. Jonah Jameson. Now isn't that better than an overweight septuagenarian breaking into your home? Caller lines are open, so dial in and spend the Yuletide with Santa Jonah! Ho, ho, ho! As I sip on this hot ch Wait a minute. Jared, where are my marshmallows? Out? How could they be out? Ugh. Friends, the war on Christmas is brutal and relentless. But we soldier on. Call now. Folks, here we are again. A major disaster in our city. Explosions. A bridge collapse. Weapons discharged amid rush hour traffic. Thank heaven no lives were lost. But we can't be that lucky every time. What if this attack had happened a few days later, during the so-called storm of the century the 5 o'clock news won't stop jabbering about? From disaster to bedlam in a snap. Now there's plenty of blame to go around, including to these underground thugs 
That being said, it'd be a dereliction of my duty if I didn't point out that the Underground's attack was little more than an armored car heist until Spider-Man's bratty little sidekick showed up and tried to handle things all on his own. What happened next? He made things worse. This new kid wants to be Spider-Man? Well, he sure is living up to the name. Speaking of which, anyone notice that the original Spider-Man hasn't been seen lately? I think I know why. He's like the parent pretending that the kid melting down in the cereal aisle isn't theirs. But we know the apple doesn't fall far from the web. We know it! You're the apple, Spider-Man! Friends, today I'm gonna have to be the disappointed parent. Not because of Jared. He's actually doing a fine job for a change. No, I'm disappointed that once again, some of you have allowed yourselves to be convinced that it's okay for a complete stranger with zero legal authority to parade around in a Halloween costume pretending to be some kind of savior. And once again, that misplaced faith has resulted in an unimaginable disaster. The truth is, it doesn't matter if you think Spider-Man is good. It doesn't even matter if he thinks he's good. What matters is that every time something gets destroyed in this city, he's there. Or now, his protege is. Ask yourselves, with all these crises we faced, can we really afford to deal with twice as many? And where will it all end? Spider-Woman? Spider-Punk? Spider-Pig? Oh! While I vomit at that thought, enjoy these important messages from our fine sponsors. Oh! Today I have the honor of welcoming Roxxon Energy's head of R&D, Simon Krieger. Mr. Krieger, you've been out promoting the benefits of your new form reactors, the first of which is set to open in Harlem soon. Yet, you've had some critics. Hmm. Well, first off, Jonah, uh, let me say what an honor and a pleasure it is to be on your show. Oh, well, I'm blushing. And, yeah, you're right. We've had some resistance, most notably from Rio Morales, who uh, looks to be a new city council member in the upcoming special election. And I have a, I have a lot of respect for Ms. Morales. Uh, she's smart. She's a great role model for young women. But I think she's putting her energy in the wrong place. Our new form reactors will make this a better city, a better home for New Yorkers. But I, I, I guess some people just have a hard time with change. Let me give you some advice. One highly successful man to another. You know what I like to say to my critics? F*** you and the horse you rode in on! <laughs> well, okay, I, I, uh, I admire your conviction, your, uh... You're a man who's not afraid to pay a fine in order to make uh, your point. Fine? What do you mean? Jared, how much? Do your editing thing, quick! You all remember Wilson Fisk, don't you? The so-called kingpin of crime? I'm told he's getting five-star treatment in his cell, which is nicer than Jared's apartment, while his shark lawyers appeal his conviction. But it seems there may be some justice in the world after all. Because a new Daily Bugle expose reveals that his now dilapidated Fisk Tower, which is scheduled for demolition in the new year, has been taken over by squatters. And isn't it just perfect karma that this garish monument to the ego of a guy who always felt he was above the law has been overrun by a bunch of freeloading bums? Next thing you know, Spider-Man turn the joint into his personal headquarters. So how does it feel to be hoisted on your own petard, Wilson? No, Jared, that is not an obscenity. Read a book! Stop me if you've heard this before. Spider-Man chases villain through city. Millions of dollars of property damage follow. We're still tallying up the damage from Rhino's rampage. Then the bridge disaster. And now it seems the junior menace decided to go for the hat trick with his new frenemy, the Tinkerer. I say those two should get a room, preferably a prison cell, and hash out their differences in private, somewhere very, very far from New York, 
And I don't just mean Jersey. I'm talking Oregon or even Alaska. Then maybe I could have one peaceful night at home watching the great Wakandan cook-off without getting interrupted by my fire escape being torn off the side of my building. Darn it, that reminds me. Jared, did you set my DVR? Batten down the hatches, folks. The long presaged storm of the century, one heck of a blizzard, is blowing in. Make sure you're stocked up on supplies. My loyal listeners will already have plenty of Jameson's jerky, guaranteed to last longer than radioactive fallout. Meanwhile, if you're planning on taking the in-laws to visit Trinity Church, I got some bad news. Parts of this sacred local landmark are now rubble, following... Yet another skirmish involving Spider-Man and the Tinkerer. Thankfully, Roxxon was able to secure the scene quickly. The current whereabouts of either masked menace are unclear. But right now, that's secondary to the fact that Roxxon has generously offered to pick up the cost of Trinity's restoration. Even though the damage was caused through no fault of their own. That's the kind of selfless giving we need more of this time of year, folks. Roxxon just made my nice list. I'll give you three guesses who's on the naughty list. And they all start with spider. And end in man! Listeners, you all know that I pride myself on truth, integrity, and facts. I've been tough on this new Spider-Man since the disaster on Braithwaite Bridge. For good reason. The kid screwed things up so bad, even the original model would have blushed redder than his costume. The classic one, not that ugly new thing. But today, I must also acknowledge that the city is rallying around this youngster and proclaiming him... Uh, a hero. <sighs> With an unstable energy source on the verge of wiping Harlem off the map, this youthful Spider-Man reportedly stepped in and saved lives. Or at least that's what his supporters want us to think. The real truth is that none of this would have happened if he hadn't donned a ridiculous suit and started swinging willy-nilly around the city performing reckless acts of violence. Hero? More like zero? Ha! Jared, open up the lines. I want to hear from those who agree with me. Jared, I said open up the lines. What do you mean they're open? Well, something must be wrong. Folks, we're having technical difficulties. Please stand by. On this very special episode, I'm joined by newly elected councilwoman Rio Morales of Harlem, who has been instrumental in the effort to scale back Roxxon's expansion plans following the revelations that they endangered New Yorkers with their highly unstable energy source, New Form. Welcome, Councilwoman. Thanks for having me, Mr. Jameson. I have to say, I was surprised when you reached out to my office. My producer, Jared, was insistent that we have you on. Something about needing to broaden our demographics, especially after your recent appearance on another much less popular show. Oh, yeah. Danica Hart was wonder... My listeners would like to know, how do you plan to bring prosperity to your community? I think I speak for everyone when I say it's an area that has struggled for quite some time. True prosperity isn't brought in from outside by huge faceless corporations. It comes from sustained investment in the people that make our community so special. It's true that folks here have struggled, but that's only because they've lacked advocates in City Hall. I will be their voice. And my hope is with that support, the city and the world will see that we're a vibrant area full of brilliant artists, kind people, and now even our very own Spider-Man. About that, you are now a publicly elected official. You are obligated to serve according to a constitution, laws, and time-tested ethical requirements, which I'm sure you respect. How can you reconcile that responsibility with your support of a vigilante who isn't bound by any of the same safeguards? Spider-Man is not our enemy. He's a New Yorker like the rest of us, and he's just trying to do what's right. And if you ask me, he couldn't be doing a better job. 
That doesn't replace my obligations to my community, nor anyone else's who serves in a public role. But I do sleep easier every night knowing that he's out there, helping us all pick up the slack. I'm happy to spend all day arguing why that sleep could easily become a nightmare. But we're out of time. And your approval polls are very high. So I'll just say thank you, Councilwoman. Jared will be sending you some lovely parting gifts, including my J. Jonah Java, the decaf substitute doctors like mine are insisting their patients of a certain age drink. If you down it fast, you almost believe it's real coffee. Jameson out. Friends, small businesses are the backbone of America, and they have no greater champion than J. Jonah Jameson. But they have an enemy, too, Spider-Man. Apparently, he's been disrupting their supply chains in Harlem. Here to tell us about it is the proprietor of local restaurant Pana Fuerte. Buenvenidos, Camila. Eh, gracias, Señor Jameson, but there's been a misunderstanding. Spider-Man stopped the punks who were robbing us. I think your producer got confused. He kept wanting to talk to me in Spanish. Don't ask me why. Ugh, Jared's taking a course, which he's clearly gonna fail. But having a Spider-Man in your neighborhood, fighting criminals in the streets, that can't be good for business. Actually, it's great. We got tourists coming in, hoping to see him. And when something gets damaged, my husband fixes it. His name's Jesus. He's a contractor. His business is called Y'all Meet Jesus. Anything gets messed up, he's your guy. <laughs> Thank you, madam. I think we can all use Jesus right about now. Especially Jared, as soon as we cut to commercial. I said cut to commercial. Take your medicine like a man. Folks, the Feast Centers have had a rough go ever since their founder, Martin Lee, turned out to be the mad bomber known as Mr. Negative. But I believe in the Feast Centers, because I knew May Parker, the brave woman who literally gave her life to keep them going. So I was distressed to hear the Harlem branch recently suffered a damaging flood. With us is Gloria, director of that center. Yeah, thanks. Uh, anyone who wants to donate to the cleanup, check out our website. It's tax deductible. Wonderful. I'm donating 10% of my paycheck for this week. And half of Jared's. Now, I'm hearing Spider-Man may have been responsible for the flood. No way. Someone was responsible, but it wasn't Spider-Man. Follow the money. Who benefits from lower property values? And I'm going to stop you there, because we have a strict policy of not saying anything that will get me sued. Incidentally, I'm pretty sure Spider-Man can't afford lawyers. He wasn't Spider-Man. We're out of time. Thanks so much for joining us, Gloria. And remember, everyone, if you want to be a real hero, not like a certain masked menace, donate to Feast. Jared, cut her mic before I end up in the poorhouse. Today, I want to address some rumors making the rounds of the pool halls and sleazy bars. Supposedly, Wilson Fisk has been trying to destabilize Harlem in order to make it cheaper and easier for him to acquire properties. All from behind bars! Now, you all know my distaste for conspiracy theories. If there's proof, I will be the first to condemn malfeasance. But until that happens, it is poisonous, irresponsible, and wrong to repeat such faceless and inflammatory claims. That's the kind of behavior I'd expect from someone like Spider-Man, who several people have told me enjoys a destabilized neighborhood himself because it creates more crime and thus more opportunities for him to make himself look good. So let's be careful what we say and stick to the facts. Okay, people? Folks, I've heard differing opinions from my discerning listeners about Roxxon's security force. On the one hand, and this is fair, there are some of the same concerns I have about Spider-Man. These are not law enforcement officers and do not answer to the same standards. On the other hand, Roxxon has every right to protect its property and interests. And many of the skirmishes people are concerned about started because Spider-Man broke and entered into Roxxon's places of business. Now, I'm told these incidents have died down, 
But I ask you, if a stranger in a skin-tight suit burst into your bedroom at night, what would you do? No, no, wait, that was rhetorical. Jared, shut down the comments. You people are sick. Good news, friends. My sources say underground activity has subsided significantly, and the Tinker is officially presumed dead. We survived the storm of the century, and our wounds are healing. But New Yorkers must remain ever vigilant. This is the greatest city on Earth, which means there will always be lunatics trying to make a name for themselves by disrupting the tranquility of our daily lives. One minute you're washing down a delicious everything bagel with a fresh cup of Pana Fuerte coffee. The next minute, not one, but two masked menaces run by your window and you discover the hard way that scalding hot is great in the cup, but agony in your pants. Well, I for one pledge to continue rallying the public against such crises and anything worse that may yet come. After much reflection and serenity training, I am able to accept that there are now two... <gasps> two Spider-Men! But rest assured, I will continue holding them to the highest standard and will be the first to call them out when they come up short. Which they will. Often. That is my promise to you. And this is J. Jonah Jameson, signing off. Until next time. Some disturbing news has just crossed my desk. Spider-Man was recently involved in a nauseating act of depravity. Stealing toys from children. Is there anything lower than that? Why, yes there is, my faithful flock. Do you know what was found in this stolen stash? Spider-Man toys! Not only does he steal from children, he bullies them into playing with toys they probably don't even want! The nerve! The audacity! Which is why I'm announcing a new venture for the Just the Facts team. J. Jonah Jameson action figures. I have a prototype right here in front of me. And <laughs> let me tell you, this is one handsome toy. Oh, my goodness, what a specimen. Any self-respecting child or adult, I won't judge, would be lucky to get their hands on this masterpiece. In fact. Jared, order ten for me and ten for my wife. Get one for yourself, too. It'll come out of your next paycheck. You're welcome. Listen up, people. I finally have scientific proof that Spider-Man is a crime against nature. Allow me to explain. A recent incident involving a construction crane and a tiny bit of ice turned into a spider snafu when the masked menace decided to intervene. The result? A disaster the likes of which this city has never seen. We have yet to receive a body count, but I can assure you, it will be... What's that? <clears throat> I'm being told no lives were lost. Thank heavens. But the number of injured is likely significant. We're still awaiting word from local hospitals on just how many... Seriously? Ugh. I'm now being told there were no injuries. However, this doesn't change the fact that this tragedy could have been avoided if Spider-Man had just let nature take its course. Jared, get me new fact checkers! I know they're your roommates! Get me new ones! Get rid of the one with the beanie!